QQQI is a really, really popular dividend ETF that pays almost a 15% dividend yield and tracks the NASDAQ 100. So what we are going to do today is calculate how many shares you need to have, how much money you need to invest into this ETF to make $100 every single week from the dividend. Now, this one, like I said, it is popular. It has been beaten down a little bit as the markets have been going all over the place, but I'm super, super excited to see the results because I do own QQQI and I am a very large fan of this fund and its brother fund, SPYI. Um, so we're going to jump right into it. But first things first, I always have to say, if you like dividends, financial content, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, uh, check it out and don't forget to like the video that helps me out a ton. If you guys get something valuable from this video and as always join the free discord, we just talk about stocks and dividends and investing and all that over there. And it's super, super fun. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the website for NEOS. I jumped directly to the QQQI fact sheet. And so we're going to talk about this fund. Like I said, it is a monthly payer. The distribution rate is sitting at about 15%. We're going to double check that. We'll do a calculation when we check out their dividend yield. And then we will look at the drip calculation and then do our final calculation at the end as well. So that's a little rough estimate on what we're going to be doing. But some of the key points for QQQI. Um, one thing that's really, really important is the expense ratio of 0.68%, a little bit lower than what we've been seeing with the yields this high, but that is still pretty high. Uh, usually around what, 0.3 used to be considered high, and now they're all the way up to a full percent with like the yield max funds, which is crazy. But these are really hard to manage, I imagine. I'm no expert myself, but definitely I imagine it's not easy to write these contracts consistently. So we'll talk about the high points, monthly income generation. It wants to aim, it aims to have high monthly income by investing in the constituents of the NASDAQ 100 index and implementing a data-driven call option strategy. The really cool thing with this fund is tax efficiency. How they write it is you get 60-40 on your taxes, meaning that 60% um, are are long-term and long-term holdings are taxed less than short-term holdings, which would be like day trading. And so the 40% short-term, you're still getting taxed a little bit higher on those. But if you're in a Roth account like I am, taxes don't matter. Uh, but I do have brokerages that aren't. So that is really important to note. Um, the potential that they try to go for with, with QQQI, they want to have a portion of the NASDAQ 100's upsize when it rises. But again, if we were to see a crazy bull market, you will see QQQ... Um, and you'll see the NASDAQ 100, they will run much better than you're going to see QQQI. And the reasoning is because when you're buying into these ETFs, you want your money now. You want it to compound. You want more of it. Usually people are doing drip. Um, and so the, the difference with that is you're not just holding it. You might be holding it for a long period of time, but that money is growing in a different strategy than someone that is just a growth investor. So, which is interesting. I like dividends, of course. And so I think that that is... A better option for me but we'll look at how it has returned so the nav overall on the three month is up 7.7 percent six uh six month is 10.5 percent but since inception only 8.5 percent and the market price is right around there as well we've seen the index go all over the place because when the nasdaq 100 drops this one will follow which is unfortunate but you're still gonna be paying up those dividends they may be higher or lower depending on the volatility and the option strategy that they are using but all in all, that's what you're holding this for, right? You want that monthly income. So I think it is really important to note that. There is a ton of information on their website. And in these, these are relatively new funds. We can see they're holding Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Broadcom, Amazon, Meta, Tesla, Google, and Costco. Costco is a funny one. But I've seen Apple's been dropping like crazy. Well, I, I shouldn't say been dropping. People have been selling out of Apple quite a bit recently. So I'm interested in seeing how it performs. But then we see the, the key features again, tax efficient, potential upside, and monthly income. The management team does have a few years of experience between them, which is crazy, over, over 40. And so it's definitely interesting. I see people using QQQI and SPYI as a hedge for some monthly income. If you're someone that wants to live off of your dividends already, let's say you've already reached fire, um, this might be the fund for you to get paid out consistently. You don't have to go through the hassle of selling stock every week or so or month, but still it's really, really an interesting fund. And I'm glad that they're coming out with more and more of these funds. So now what we're going to do, we're going to check the dividend yield and check that dividend history and see how accurate they are. So looking at the dividend history, one thing I love about these funds, the NEOS funds is their dividends are relatively consistent. We see about a disparity of a few cents with this one going from 59 cents on the low to a high of 64 cents. That's what a six cent swing. Compare that to the yield max funds where it's like 
sometimes dollars, which is insane. Uh, but this gives you more consistent income. If you're someone who's retired and you want to live off dividends, this one might be a better option because it is so consistent. Even if the price fluctuates, they've still been pretty consistent. Now we've seen the dividend go up probably because we've seen volatility go up. And so those option premiums are getting a little bit juicier, even if the market is in a higher state of distress. Now I just ran through a ton of math checking into all of this and it's very, very interesting. So what I'm gonna tell you is how I calculate my dividend yields is I had the average. The average was a little over... 61 cents is the average of the dividends they've paid out between 59 to 64 that makes sense so we're going to take that 61 cents and we're going to multiply it by 12 because it pays out uh 12 times a year and now we're going to take this seven and we're going to divide it by the current price which is 49.40 this took me so long because my math today is not working and multiply that by 100 and you have a yield of 14.8 percent which is accurate to what they're saying it is so i was really happy about that my initial calculation had to be lower and i was really confused but no this is the calculation this is how i found it and it works out to about a 14% dividend yield, which I think is phenomenal, even though it is, you're going to lose, um, let's see, 0.7% to the fees and you're going to lose, we've seen it drop about a percent. So you're still roughly getting about a 13% um, return on your investment, which is again, phenomenal. And even in markets where we've seen things rocket and go 22% this year, that is still consistent and it should be more consistent uh, depending on how the price of the underlying one NASDAQ 100 goes. So I think that is really, really important to note. But again, the dividend history, there's not a lot of history for this fund because they are so new, but I do like that it is, it is very consistent so far. And normally there's a lot of, of difference in these funds when they're first started because there's a lot of people buying in people selling you know speculation stuff like that so i like that it has been really consistent but let's check out the drip calculator so with 10k invested into qqqi when the fund was created in january um, of this year so again very very new fund we can see that you would be up so far just under eight percent with an annualized gain of roughly 13 and a half percent which is again close to what I determine a little bit lower because they're not taking stuff out um, for the fees, I'm sure. But still, that is a pretty solid return. Uh, like I said, I own this one. I didn't purchase it at the beginning of the fund, but I have uh, made some money on it and I'm really happy about that. The dividends have been consistent. I'll be putting out a video of all my dividends that paid out in the month of August for those that are interested. But we can see with dividends reinvested, you're a little bit better than not reinvested. This would really make a huge difference over time because the compounding effect. So I do think uh, that this is a good sign for the fund. Again, it is still really new. We, ne we never know what's gonna happen. And there are so many new ETFs, but these ones have caught my eye and I do own both this one and SPYI, and I do like them. Now, the part that we've all been waiting for is how many shares, how much money do you have to have invested to make that $100 every single week? Now, because this one pays monthly, we're looking to get $400 a month. There's roughly four months in a year. So we're looking for about $5,200 a year in dividend income, which is a lot. And I know it might not be a lot for some people, but it, I think it's a lot. So what we're going to do, we'll start with a low number of shares. Let's see what 100 shares gets us. If I can type it in correctly, it would really help. Um, we'll do 100 shares. Now that has an ending balance of $4,940, which is actually really, really close to what we want, but that's just our initial balance. So it's not gonna be anywhere close. We can see the annual dividend income is 800. And so we need this to be much higher. Um, so let's jump all the way to 400 and see what that gets us. If you're interested, I filled all this out to kind of reflect just the dividend yield and nothing else. We're not increasing the dividend. We're not decreasing it. We're not changing the price appreciation. We're not including taxes and we are not adding any more money. We're just seeing how much we need to make that $100 every single week. Now we're getting there with $20,000 invested just under that. You're getting about $3,212 every single year, which is still not enough. So let's kick this up more. Let's do $600, which ends up being, if we can get it to load, $30,000. And we're just under, we need $400 more. So let's do six, let's do 650. This will probably get us a little bit even over over by $20.77, perfect. So with an ending balance, you need $32,110 to get $5,220 in dividends every single year, which is just over $100 a month. So the total money that you need, yeah, $32,000 is a lot, but it's not 
out of reach for a lot of people. If you are able to save and build up your money over time, that could be absolutely phenomenal. Now, the key thing is that, that it would be about 650 shares, quite a few shares. But if we jump this up, and again, we're assuming that we are not going to see an increase in the price, which is rare, we can see that over time, if you invest for 10 years, and we, I need to turn the drip on, that's what makes the big difference, that your initial $32,000, $33,000 um, ends up being $144,000 and your annual dividend income jumps to $23,500 every single year with that drip powered on. And so you've actually, in 10 years, you've gotten $105,000 in dividends if the price is able to stay the same. And so it is It is really phenomenal what these funds can do. They are powerful and I think that they have a lot to offer the market and to offer dividend investors as a whole. So if you guys like the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And if you want to check out the weekly dividend payers that are new funds that are insane, um, I'll link those at the end and down below in the video description. So as always, I appreciate you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.